So now I've got my Shattered Values project started. I've already shown you all how to create the grid, how to add the wavy lines, the diagonal lines, the circle, and how to get started with your graduated value scale. What I want to do now is just show you a couple of different options in terms of colored pencils. So since my value scale goes from dark to light here, I might want this one to go from dark to light the opposite direction. So for me, I'm going to turn my page just because it's easier for me, since I'm right-handed, to go from dark to light going left to right. So I'm going to start with my darker color because I have a dark blue and I have a light blue. And I'm just going to hold my pencil pretty far back, just like I've been doing on anything that we have shaded thus far. I'm going to start in that darkest spot, but not with my darkest value yet. Because remember, I am going to build that value up in layers. Same exact concept, same technique as what we were using with the regular pencil. The thing is that you have to be a little bit more careful with colored pencil to not go beyond the edges of your line because you cannot necessarily erase a colored pencil the way you would a regular pencil. Now I'm going to turn my page so that I can go in the opposite direction a little bit. Very carefully around this little corner spot. Still not pressing down super hard, but remember that shading is relative. I know that I've said that a thousand times, you'll hear me say it a thousand more. So you have to make sure that you have a nice full range of value, but keep in mind that not every dark is dark is going to be equivalent. So not every dark shadow is the same value of darkness. So it's okay if you have a variety in these projects as well. The main thing, once again, that we are focusing on is making sure that we get a nice smooth transition from one value to the next. So I'm just doing a second layer across this space. Notice that it does take a little bit longer with the colored pencil, simply because I am being a little bit more careful. And remember that you can use all sorts of colored pencils. You can use a bunch of different colors. You can pick kind of a color scheme. You could just use a little handful of colors. You could use one color. You could mix colored pencil and graphite pencil like I've got on this example or you could just use all graphite. It is completely up to you and what you think will make this project the most fun for you. Because if you can figure out how to make the project more fun for yourself, then you're going to be more successful. So that was two layers of my darker blue. And at this point I could go over it with my lighter blue or I could go over it again with darker blue. I could go over it with a completely different color if I wanted to. For this example, I'm going to go over it with my lighter blue, pressing down pretty hard now because it's essentially the third layer. Another reason you don't want to press down too hard on those first couple of layers is because your paper has something called a tooth to it, which just means that it has a little bit of texture. And if you press down too hard too early on, then you have kind of flattened the texture of the paper and it will not hold subsequent layers as well. So you want to make sure that you're not pressing down too hard until you are actually ready to. Otherwise, you won't be able to keep layering up the colors or the values like you might need or want to. So now I'm just going to go back the opposite direction again. So you can see that the value transition here is pretty smooth and it's definitely more dramatic each layer I put on. And you can use a white colored pencil to kind of fade into the white of the paper if you prefer. It is not required because you can absolutely make a nice super duper light value 
going into that white area like we've got here. So then that would be two shapes already done. And remember, you are required for this first little bit to make sure that you have five of those completed. It can be five that are in a cluster. It can be five that are spread out wherever you might want them to be. So just so that you guys can see a couple of other colors, I'm going to do something in a warm color, like a red, so that you guys can see. So I've got some value scales going some different ways. I'm going to do this one going this way. So I'm going to start with the red. And I'm going to move across that space. Pressing down less and less as I move across. Being careful to stay within my shape there until I'm barely pressing down at all. And then I'm going to turn my page and go back in the opposite direction to clean up my edges and to go ahead and start building up that value in the darker spaces. So as you can see, the value is smoothing out. It's getting a little bit darker, but it's still a transition. And since I'm filling in all those spaces and going straight up to the edges, it is remaining a nice smooth value transition there. So now I'm barely pressing down at all, just smoothing out the slight little bit of value that is already there right before I get back to white. So at this point, I could go over that shape again with the red. I could add in some yellow, some orange, some red orange. I could add in blue in the deeper area to make that dark spot even darker. I could do the same thing with purple. You could put black in there, you could put brown. So really any combination of colors that you can think of, you can use in some way. You just want to make sure that you are intentional about your purpose for that color. So adding yellow would not necessarily make anything darker. It would make it brighter and it would make it warmer. And it would certainly liven up some of the lighter value, but it would not enhance the darker value that this red has. Going over it, Again, in the shadow area, like I just did with the red, will make it a little bit darker. Going over with the blue, brown, black, or purple will as well. Because blue and purple are cool colors, and they recede. So oftentimes, when you put those over another color, it creates a bit of a shadow. Black and brown are neutrals, and they kind of have the same effect as a cool color would. So now I'm going to do another example using the red, but this time I will put some blue into the shadow space so that you can see how that works. So this time I'm going to do sort of a diagonal value scale right here. So it's going to start toward the corner and it's just going to go diagonally across that space. And I could curve this, like if I wanted to keep going around on a curve and have it kind of be more of a curved value scale, you could. Kind of more like a sphere. You absolutely could do something like that. So right now I'm just kind of smoothing out my edges that are right along the shape there before I add any more layering with the red.
So now I'll be ready to go ahead and do one more layer of red before I go in with any blue to even deepen that shadow space more. So I'm not going to press down super hard with my red because like I was saying earlier, we want to make sure that the paper has enough texture that it will accept the blue. I know it sounds a little bit weird to think about paper that way, but the more you go ahead and get used to that concept, the better your shading will be and the more quickly it will improve. So now I'm just going to go ahead and get my darker blue. I'm going to go into that corner and I'm still not going to press down super hard because I don't want to change the color. I just want to darken it. So I'm just pressing down hard enough to have some of that blue sort of mix with the red. It's going to create kind of a purpley color because blue and red are both primary colors and they do when used intentionally mix to create purple. But since we are using more red than we are blue, we're really creating more of a red violet within that shadow area only. And then I'm still going to get lighter and lighter with my pencil as, as I move away from that area. It's just going to be a more abrupt change than the red was because I don't want to take the blue all the way down because I'm not making the whole shape red violet, just that little shadow space. So then if I wanted to, I could go back over that one more time with the red to kind of beef up the red a little bit more, or I could leave it like it is if I like that slightly more violet type of red, which I personally do. So I would leave it like that which then gives me one, two, three, four. So then there would be one more shape to complete for this particular part of the project so that I can check and make sure you were doing things correctly before you move along, but you will eventually be shading all the different shapes that you have created within this space, going whichever direction you want to with a series of graduated value scales.